promised you, didn't I, that we were going to lift the lid on some of Britain's most incredible achievements because there's a, a new book which has just been released and it's looking at exactly that, Britain's most incredible achievements across the years. And I did mention that there is one very notable Nottinghamshire woman in there making, I would say, a starring role. The man behind the book is Dominic Selwood and he's going to tell you more about it now. Morning, Dominic. Hello, morning. Hello. So, I mean, this is a mammoth task, though, isn't it, Dominic, to to decide to write a book on Britain's most incredible achievements? Because how do you decide, you know, which ones are more incredible than others? <laughs> yes, well, what I tried to do was was narrow it down to 50, uh, so already try and put some kind of limit on it. Um, and then um, it, it opens the broader question of, of, you know, what is Britain? What are its achievements? What's its identity? You know, what do we learn about Britain from all of this? So I tried to find 50 things that really tell us something down the down the ages and the ages are huge humans first walked onto britain in 950,000 bc so that's a lot of time in which for things to happen so um i chose i chose in the end 50 documents because i thought that was the most personal way of really getting to hear people's voices in the different eras of um of you know of what was important then um and yes you're right uh, one of them has a, a very strong nottinghamshire link but you know choosing that 50 was uh, w- was a long process but great great fun yeah um, well, obviously you've done it. You managed to achieve it. Uh, so tell me about the big Nottinghamshire link. Who are we talking about? Right. We are talking about Ada Byron, who some people may have heard of, but other people may not have done. She was the daughter of Lord Byron, the famous poet and hellraiser. Um, but she had a fascinating career in her own right, um, because in the in the early 1800s, um, her mother... Uh, decided that she didn't want her daughter to be anything like her father, who she thought was a wastrel and a drunkard and a really bad influence. So she encouraged her daughter to be really interested in science, which was quite unusual back in the day. And she had her tutored by some leading scientists. And Ada became fascinated by engineering and mechanics and maths and physics. And when she was quite young, when she was 17, she was introduced to a man called Charles Babbage, who moved in the circle of people like Charles Dickens and was, you know, a big shaker and mover in London. But he was a leading scientist. And he developed these um, uh, early computers. So the first one he developed was in the 1830s. But really, it was just kind of a, it was just um, um, a, a big calculator, really. But then he moved on to something which he called his analytical engine. And this actually was a, a programmable computer. If you look at what the elements are of a computer today, having memory, being able to process, you know, et cetera, it could do all of that. It even had a printer. You know, this was the 1830s. <laughs> it was incredible. He never actually built the whole thing. But people have built it subsequently to his drawings, which are immaculate. And it does completely work. So that's incre- incredible, isn't it? Just just the story of Charles Babbage. But but Ada's story, I mean, we, we sort of know her as Ada Lovelace, I think, don't we, rather than Ada Byron, which I presume is a mother's doing uh, to try uh, yeah, to reduce yeah. the Byron link. Um, but she, she yeah. wrote a programme for it, didn't she? She did. She did. She did. Yeah, she, um, she, um, uh, uh, um, uh, Babbage gave a talk in Turin on it. And somebody who listened to it was an engineer who actually later became Prime Minister of Italy. And he, he wrote like lots of things about it in, in an Italian journal. And Ada said, look, can I translate this? And Babbage said, yes, of course you can. So she translated it from Italian into English. Um, but then she wrote all these explanatory notes at the end, which actually turned out to be longer than the original guy's article. But in those notes is the world's first computer program. So Ada Byron wrote the world's first computer program. And in fact, nobody really kind of appreciated that at the time. But, you know, in her notes and with the program, she set it the task of computing a particular set of mathematical numbers called the Bernoulli numbers. And her program completely works for doing that. So it's a proper program. You know, it's got a beginning, middle and end, and it has a function and it has an outcome. Um, But it was only the 1950s that people realized what she'd done and she started getting famous. Um, so that so that sort of in more modern times, for example, the U.S. Department of Defense, when they were trying to find a computer program to unify all of their disparate programs, they built a new one and they called it Ada in uh, in, in recognition of her. <laughs> and she's also she's found her way into dramas even. So if you watch um, uh, the, the drama about uh, Queen Victoria, um, Ada Lovelace was a character that popped up in that. And, and there there's seems to be a sort of growing understanding of who she was and the impact that she had. Uh, there was even a campaign to get her on a on a note, wasn't there? A bank note. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, there was. And um, the 12th of October every year is actually Ada Byron Day or Ada Lovelace Day. And it's, it's for celebrating women in science, you know, women in STEM. Um, and so she is the torchbearer for all of that, um, which is great. So she finally has the recognition because actually she, um, she died rather sadly very young. 
Um, she died at 36. She had um, she had um, uh, uterine cancer, um, and she was taking lots of medication for it. And it made her very unwell, and she got badly into gambling, and she lost lots of her jewels. And so her life actually ended rather sadly. But even though she'd never met her father, because her mother kept them apart, and her father set sail for Greece when she was four months old, and she never met him. But when, when just before she was she died, she said, "I would like to be buried next to him," um, which is which is really touching. And so she is buried in the family vault in uh, in Hucknall which, for those who don't know, is between Nottingham and Mansfield. Um, and well, it's so just over your, there. It's, it's just, yeah. <laughs> Dominic, it's great to talk to you. Thanks for telling me about your book, Anatomy of a Nation, the history of British identity in 50 documents by Dominic Selwood, who you've just been hearing from. Uh, obviously available now in um, all good bookshops online, all that kind of thing. And yes, look out for the documents that are in there from Ada Lovelace stroke Ada Byron, whichever way you prefer to describe her.